My name's Joe Biden. <laughs> Welcome, to Welcome Mr. President. We've been waiting for you. Welcome to the swimming pool. This is, yeah, this is great. <laughs> hey, look, good afternoon. The past two days have gotten some, we've gotten some very good news about the American economy. Just yesterday, shipping carriers, uh, after some discussion, an international longshoreman union came to an agreement to keep their ports in the East Coast and the Gulf ports open. We averted what could have become a major crisis for the country. And a tentative agreement, which includes record wage increases for dock workers and shows the importance of collective bargaining and represents, I think, critical progress toward a strong contract. I especially want to thank the carriers, the port operators, and the Longshoremen's Union for reaching this agreement at a time when the nation has experienced such terrible devastation from Hurricane Helena. It was truly a service to the American people for all these parties to come together and respond to our request to keep the ports open. I was determined to, do, to avert a crisis at this moment because it's a critical moment. If we didn't do this now, we'd have a real problem. I also want to thank my White House team for uh, the work they worked around the clock to bring the parties together. But today, I, we got more incredible news. Although the strength of the American economy uh, uh, is uh, it's about the strength of the American economy. New jobs report, as you all know, you've been reporting, created 250,000 jobs in September. The expectation was for 150,000 jobs in September, which has far exceeded that number. Not only the previous two months was not only that the previous two months was revised up 150,000, uh, 75,000 jobs, and from the very beginning we were told time and again that. The policies we were pursuing, we'd put forward, weren't, weren't going to work, make things worse, including some of the other team are still saying they're going to make things worse. But we've proven them wrong. You know, we've told our American, we, 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 we were told our American rescue plan was too big and it would crowd out private investment. We proved them wrong, we vaccinated a nation and got immediate economic relief to people in need. When I came to office determined to end trickle-down economics and grow the economy from the middle out and the bottom up, I know you're tired of hearing me say that over and over again, but that was the policy, that it remains the policy. Because when you do that, everyone does well. When the middle class grows, the nation's stronger. And the nation's stronger when there's a strong union movement as well. We were told it wouldn't work, but I was also determined to do what was ignored for much too long. Presidents have been authorized since the 30s to be able to spend the money given by Congress to spend the money on hiring American workers and using American product where they were available. And that's what we did. We were told that was going to be a big problem. But all the money we, I was authorized to spend by the Congress has gone to building, um, to, gone to hiring American workers and using American products. We were told it wasn't going to be, uh, we were told uh, that was going to be a big problem, but it's working. We're also told that our historic laws to invest in America and all Americans would crowd out private sector investment. Well, that was proven wrong, too. We've attracted nearly $1 trillion since we've come to office in private sector investment from domestic and foreign companies investing in America, in America. They're not the stuff of sh 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 shipping jobs overseas for cheaper labor and bringing back a product to America. We're building it here and sending it overseas. And look at the results across the board. Unemployment is down four to 4.1 percent. And every month, in fact, that Vice President Harris and I have been in office, we've been, there's been, we've created jobs every single month. The nation has now created 16 million jobs since I've come to office, more jobs created in a single presidential term than any time in American history. Our GDP shows our economy grew at 10 percent under my administration. Unemployment reached the lowest level in 50 years. We're also told inflation couldn't come down without massive job losses or sending the economy into economic recession. Once again, outside experts were wrong. Inflation has come down. Wages have gone up faster than prices. Interest rates are down. Record 19 million new business applications have been filed for. The stock market continues to reach new heights. We've got more work to do, though. Keep getting, keep, keep, keep getting prices down, like more affordable housing, 
extending what I've uh, done for seniors and lowering prescription drug costs by letting Medicare negotiate the prices, make sure that's available to everyone. And by the way, what we've done so far, just when we brought down the prices for seniors under Medicare, it saved the taxpayers billions of dollars. Billions of dollars. Saved the taxpayers billions of dollars. That's important to note because they don't have to pay the exorbitant and irrational prices that these companies are charging. The simple fact is we've gone from an economy in crisis to literally having the strongest economy in the world. And, uh, but we've got, we, we've got more work to do. We've got more work to do to deal with, uh, with the things I've just mentioned, and we're going to have to deal with unforeseen cost of what this, uh, this, hur this hurricane is going to cost. It's going to cost a lot of money. And I'm going to probably have to ask the Congress before we leave for more money to deal with some of those problems. But that remains to be seen. I'll take a few questions before I turn it over to Phil. 